One of the UK's biggest phone networks says it received a demand for money from someone who claims they hacked into its systems. TalkTalk Talk has more than 4 million UK customers. It says there's a chance hackers gained customer bank and credit card details. Millions of people have trusted Carphone Warehouse with their bank account details. Yet customers are this morning anxious that criminals may have those details, as well as names, addresses and dates of birth. The encrypted credit card information of up to 90,000 customers could also have been compromised. Steve Mellings. Steve is from a company called Adiza. Frederick Forsland of Blanco Technology Group, Gerard Fisher of RAP, John Handley, John Handley is the security officer, Amir at Symantec, Robert Palmer from Viasat. In terms of where the regulation is, um, last brief that we had a couple of weeks ago from a lawyer was that a lot of the detail has been signed off. Uh, the regulation looks like it's going to come through. Uh, they say later on, December 2015 was quoted, I suspect it will slip again. Um, so it is coming. The format that it's in is probably the really difficult question to answer right now because until it actually gets published, um, they reserve the right to change anything effectively. Um, the elements that we see which have been mentioned for the last two years, which are still being briefed by the lawyers as, as they are coming, uh, increase in maximum fine, uh, the exact detail again, 2% um, or 5% of global turnover is consistent. Um, we've also heard that there's going to be a government caveat in there for themselves where governments will only get fined a certain amount, so they won't suffer the 2 to 5% themselves. That's probably going to get a legal challenge, you suspect. Um, devil in the detail, mandatory breach notification looks like it's coming through. Um, definition of breach, which is the key bit. Um, uh, current ICO guidelines or definition of breach um, is about loss of control. Um, so if you lose a mobile phone, they would class that as breach at the moment. If you consider that and roll it up, if everybody has to mandatory notify that you lose a phone, I myself would be notifying the ICO probably five times a year. Um, so again, you can see the detail in breach is, is perhaps um, needs to be clarified. Um, data protection officer, which would be the person within an organisation who focuses on data. Um, again, that hasn't been defined whether it's going to be each member state's requirement or whether it will be mandated at the EU level. And also the number of data subjects is still open for uh, some debate. Again, that will be clarified when the detail comes through. Um, key bits for um, relationships in terms of cloud and asset disposal. Uh, at the moment, data processors have no legal liability. Um, when the law changes, they will have legal liability and you'll have to contract with them. At the moment, it's illegal for a data controller to not, not have a contract in place with a data processor. Um, when the law changes, it will be illegal for a data processor to not have a contract in place with the data controller, beginning to try and solidify the relationship between a processor and controller. So I guess to summarise, without talking too long about this, is that there's a whole raft of changes coming through. Some of them are going to be very, very significant increase in fine, mandatory breach notification. Some of them there's going to be some weedy detail about how you comply with it, contracts to be in place between processor and controller and change in liability. Ergo, there'll be an insurance requirement, you would have thought as well. Um, so really, the, the landscape is going to change very significantly. One of my concerns is about uh, the proliferation of devices that will bear data. Um, if you read reports from the International Energy Authority, they're forecasting something like 100 billion devices by 2030. So, you know, a huge number of assets, either in the home setting or in businesses, working through routers, working through data connections, they're all going to contain data. And so it's not just about your cloud systems and your servers, it's how is your whole estate and your extended estate going to be protected. A company called Ipswich did some research. 56% didn't know what GDPR stands for. 52% said they weren't ready. 35% said they didn't have the correct IT tools or processes. 6% said their cloud service providers were ready. But I would say it's even worse than that. I do not expect that even close to 50% of companies being prepared and aware. The directive that we had before has been um, uh, in use since 95. This process 
uh, that has led up until these last shivering weeks of decision making has taken uh, five years approximately. Uh, we are going to have two years once the final agreement has been reached between the tri negotiators. We're going to have two very hectic years where people will realize, wake up and start taking actions. To give an example of where the companies have prepared, um, the Ipswich study which came out, which you've already mentioned, but I was actually at Crown Commercial Services, for those of you who work in, uh, in government, you'll know that that's the procurement arm of, of HMG, um, with, with the lead for the technical services side. So they negotiate contracts and write contracts for cloud services, asset disposal and things like that. I had to explain what the European EU data protection regulation was to them. That was Monday. And these guys are writing contracts that will last for maybe the next two to five years. Uh, there hasn't been any legislation whatsoever previously that has had the same amount of amendments during the process. Uh, the kind of negotiations that are going on now between the Parliament, the Commission and the Council are extremely complex. Uh, you're seeing industry representatives for thousands of uh, large companies that are actually uh, claiming that if certain wordings come through uh, that could significantly reduce competitiveness in Europe. The budgets have been squeezed horrendously and, and tin has been sweated and supported in so many different ways. The communication um, has not been handled as expertly as it may have been. Um, I think a lot of the information that's cascading down is coming via media versus the appropriate authorities in the EU and I'd be very interested to see how that washes out from an enforcement viewpoint. Uh, there's a mindset traditionally focusing on the asset life cycle, the gadgets, everything that you can touch. Uh, today more and more companies are steering towards, all right, we need to add another layer to that. We need to add our analysis of the corporate data life cycle and understand how data is being processed and handled and managed uh, along the whole life cycle, which includes how you collect it, and in the end, how you kill it. You know, if you look at the, the consumer market, first of all, they probably don't really understand what data means or the extent of data that might be there. And then they don't really understand the easy routes to take action about it, so whether they might want to get it eradicated or not. check our asset information register because we already had one. I think probably what we'll do is create one very quickly in reality um, and that would also have to identify where data might be flowing to non-EU countries and where data was going to our suppliers and supply chain because there are also risks of breach. Um, the second part of that is actually to develop uh, kind of a non-asset information register which is a list of all of those places where data is actually going that we didn't think it was or it wouldn't be like employees personal devices when they've logged into our email system any of those kind of accesses Firstly, how big is the dish issue and what has been compromised, trying to find out the scale of the problem. 
understanding whether it's still ongoing, and depending on the answer to both of those, uh, instigate a data recovery process and a, um, a, a comms program to try and uh, uh, initiate some form of uh, reduced exposure. Um, we toured with the idea of trying to actually find the device. That would be, if you could actually do that, then it would be a huge benefit. Um, but then we thought that, of course, you don't know if it's been copied, the information's been copied. So we've decided to find out if the device is encrypted um, and then consult data control, uh, find out legal, um, and then assess the risk of the worst case scenario. The most common factor behind data breach is a human error somewhere. And the only way to work against that proactively is going to have a lot of educational efforts within the companies, which is going to make all of us think about privacy, data breach, the value of data, our data, our processes, within business as well as individuals.